So peace be with you, beloveds. I'm Reverend Mitzi, and whether you're with us in person or you're watching online, welcome. And if you're watching online, please come be with us in person very soon. So each month this year, we have reviewed one of the 12 spiritual powers that Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore identified as inherent in each of us. And these powers are aspects of our divine nature that we can develop and express. So today in my message, The Sacred Art of Letting Go, we explore the power for November, which is the power of release. Now, according to Charles Fillmore, the power of release, which is also known as the power of renunciation and the power of elimination. I don't know why it's got three things it's known by. We're just going to call it the power of release for ease today. Well, according to Charles Fillmore, he said that it is the ability to let go of anything and everything that no longer serves our unfolding good. Who wants to do that, right? Anything and everything that no longer serves our unfolding good. So release is the power that allows us to cleanse our whole being from negative thoughts, feelings, and conditions, and to make room for new ideas and experiences. And it involves giving up old, outworn, or negative aspects of our life that are holding us back from our true potential. Charles Fillmore said it is letting go of old thoughts so that new thoughts may find place in consciousness. Now, we sing a lot about release and unity. Well, this is one song that we sing. Anyone want to mention it? I... I release and I let go, which we may hear later today. But um, actually, did you know that release is one of the least talked about spiritual powers? One of the least talked about of our 12 powers. And I'm wondering if that's perhaps because it's aligned with November. And when November rolls around, ministers are thinking of holidays and their upcoming Christmas series, and they get busy during that month. But nevertheless, release is a vitally important power. For without letting go of old ideas and beliefs, we can't move forward in our spiritual development. We can't pile new ideas on top of old beliefs that don't support those new ideas. Now, if you've been around Unity for or uh, here, any time that I've done a message on the 12 spiritual powers, you know that as well as having the 12 powers, there's also aligned with it a disciple, a color, and a body part. So the disciple that is associated with release is Thaddeus. And he represents the expulsion of negative thinking and is believed to help people who are in hopeless or difficult situations. I actually didn't know that, but we could say Thaddeus, Thaddeus, and maybe that will help, right? And the color is, they say, russet. I said that to Ron and like, russet, what's that, a potato? It's actually rust, I think. Yeah, potatoes, I'm thinking of yummy roasted potatoes right now. So rust. And um, the location for release in the body, where do you think it's going to be? It's down here, your bowels, right? So why is release so important? Well, let me put it this way. Think of a time when your personal plumbing was really backed up. You could not go. And it felt uncomfortable, right? Perhaps you even had a little bit of anxiety about it. I haven't gone for X number of days now. I feel a bit backed up. And you felt, well, you felt blocked. Anyone ever experienced that? You don't have to raise your hand in your life. Just kind of nod so no one else has to see. Well, the same happens with us spiritually when we don't release thoughts and beliefs that no longer serve us. So several years ago, Ron and I had a lovely cat, Megan, who, after she jumped out of the litter box, 
would run around gleefully. I mean, she ran around like the zoomies. And it was like she was saying, I feel so light and free now. Look at me go. I'm not blocked up anymore. And metaphysically, it feels freeing indeed to not have a constipated spirit. Life is a continual process of release and let go, which our bodies do naturally. We breathe in and we breathe out. We get hot and we sweat, or as my grandmother said, perspire, Mitzi, the word is perspire. Actually, she didn't talk with a southern accent. I don't know if she was English, so I don't know where that came from. But especially in Arizona, we perspire, right? A lot in the summer. And we eat, we drink, and we release, and all of that is vitally important. Well, the spiritual aspect of release is also vitally important, but it is not automatic like our bodily functions. It requires mindfulness and discipline to keep our consciousness uncluttered by that which would block it. Now, some might say, well, just don't think negative thoughts and just don't acknowledge any negative, but let's be real. That's kind of like saying, don't think of a pink unicorn, <laughs> right? So now for the next 15 seconds, let's try a little experiment. I, you can think about anything, but not pink unicorns. Do not think of a pink unicorn. No matter what you do for the next 15 seconds, don't think of pink unicorns. You can't do it. You can't know pink unicorns. Okay, that's hard, right? So the truth is that we all have negative thoughts and beliefs at times, and it's our job to figure out what they are so we can release them. And instead of nurturing, we can let them go. And just to be clear, there is absolutely nothing negative about pink unicorns or unicorns of any color for that matter. You know, Romans 12.2 says, say it with me, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't know about you, but when I look at the world today, I can feel many emotions, and especially I can feel a lot of sadness. Anyone else? When you look out at the world and you see everything that's going on. Yet this verse, which is a unity favor, encourages us not to conform to the world, but to do what? To be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And we do this by letting go of those old thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and stories that keep us stuck and debilitated. We let go of those things that are robbing us from living in the present, those old things that are going on. Charles Fillmore said, say it with me, a healthy state of mind is attained when the thinker willingly lets go of old thoughts and takes on the new. So what's the key word there? I emphasized it. Willingly. Exactly. Willingly lets go of those old thoughts. But how do we do this? Well, perhaps this story will help. So once there was a Japanese Zen master, and he received a visit from a very arrogant university professor. The professor had been sent to inquire about wisdom. The Zen master served tea, and he filled the professor's cup, and he kept filling it and kept filling it until it was completely overflowing everywhere. And finally, the university pr professor couldn't stand it any longer. Agitatedly, he said, stop, it is full. No more will go in, just stop pouring. Ah, the Zen master said, like this cup, you are full of your own opinions and assumptions. How can I show you wisdom unless you first empty your cup? 
I love that story so much. How many times do we need to empty our cup? Now for me, sometimes it's, a, it's several times a day, especially if I'm watching the news. I have to empty it again and again to kind of align with the truth. Other days, not so much. We all have fears and doubts. And we may think that because our fears are due to external situations, we can't have peace until the external is resolved. But if we believe this, we are a little like Jonah. If you were here for the last three weeks or even just last week, remember the story of Jonah. Jonah was very attached to the external, something that grew up. What was it? It was a plant, right? He's like, oh, loving this plant and the shade. And then what happened? Little worm comes along. Tasty little plant ate it all away. And he was really cheesed off again. In spirit, we can release our fears, worries, and doubts before the outer situation is resolved and eliminate any power that the condition has over us. So we, we actually talk a lot about letting go of things, even though we don't look at this power a lot. We do it a lot in my messages. So what are you being called to release right now? Perhaps it's a resentment. We did some last week, and it's like, I'm done with my resentments. Well, they just come back again. They're kind of like weeds, right? They come back again. Someone cheeses us off. We got another resentment brewing. A judgment, a habit, gossip, old hurts. Because no old beliefs, habits, or stories can hold us down unless we allow them to. That's really huge right there. Because we have the power of release within us. Say, I have the power of release. I have power of release. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Sandra, just say it for me. With gusto. <laughs> I have the power of release. We don't have to hold on to that stuff because within us is the power of release. Good is waiting for you. Say, good is waiting for me. And while good is waiting for us, it's also important to not be in such a spiritual bubble that we are unmoved by the struggles and heartbreaks of others on the planet. We grieve with those mourning. We remember good is waiting for us. We grieve because that is not negative. It is a part of our compassion and our caring. And often our greatest opportunities for growth and greatest challenges come from what or from whom? Other people right? Because what do they do? Beep, 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 beep. They push our buttons. And when our buttons get pushed, we can consider how our thoughts, our beliefs, and our actions are contributing to the situation. And we can ask ourselves, are we willing to forgive, to release? Because we can be free or we can be right. And we can ask ourselves, which is more important? And we can actually, because we have the power of release, enlarge our consciousness to the point where someone who used to really do a number with pushing our buttons does not have that power over us anymore. Anyone ever been there? There's a person who used to push our buttons. We have, they don't anymore. I'm seeing some nods. Just go ahead and say yes if it's happened to you. Yes. And when we give love instead of anger, we free ourselves from those negative patterns and from that which used to instare us. And it is really important that we stop pushing our own buttons too. Because we can push our own buttons. We can do it by not thinking we're good enough. All of that self-condemnation. And that is destructive and it stunts spiritual development. So say now, I release pushing my own buttons. And anyone else's too. Anyone else. There you go. Julia Cameron, who wrote the, uh, the, um, the Artist's Way, among other books, said, spirituality can release blocks 
Sometimes when we pray for guidance, we're guided in unexpected directions. We may want a lofty answer and get the intuition to clean our bedroom. It can seem so humble and picky and that you don't necessarily think of it as spiritual guidance. Well, yeah, praying for all these lofty things, go clean your room. Uh-huh, so what about that? But here's the thing. In cleaning our space, we may cross, come across things that are cluttering up our lives, things that we can donate or release. And when we release an item we no longer need, a habit or relationship not for our highest good, feelings of inadequacy about ourselves and our capabilities, anyone ever have those? Tell me I'm not alone, because I do at times. Um, then what do we do? We create a vacuum. And what does the universe abhor? Yes, not a hoover, but a vacuum. It abhors a vacuum. And so when you do that, that space wants to be filled with something good. And so because you have worked so very hard to create that space, you work so hard to create that space. I'm letting go of something. Be very careful with what you fill it with. And here is a really good affirmation to fill that space that is created. And I want to say, your name means you're going to say your name. You're going to say your name personally. Okay, let's say this together. Mitzi, I love you, I bless you, and I have faith in you. Nothing unwanted needs to remain in my consciousness and life experience. And so it is. I think we need to say this again, personally. Mitzi, I love you, I bless you, and I have faith in you. That, what, that bit, right? I have faith in you. Let's say that again. I have faith in you. Nothing unwanted needs to remain in my consciousness and life experience. And so it is. That's really powerful when we're going through something to just say, I have faith in me. I have faith in myself and my abilities in whatever I am doing. So we're going to anchor this message with a meditation. So I invite you to put your feet on the floor if it's comfortable for you. Hands uncrossed palms up in your lap. If that's your style of meditation, if you have something else, that's fine too. And I invite you to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Breathing in deeply and allowing yourself to be just here. Ah. Letting go. And now you imagine that you are standing in front of a large and ever so beautiful waterfall. The water is clear and sparkling. And the sound is so soothing and so very calming. You feel the mist on your face and the gentle breeze on your skin. As you look at the waterfall, think of something that you want to release from your life. It can be a thought, an emotion, a habit, a belief, or an attachment that is not serving your highest good. It can be something that is harming, draining, hurting, or cluttering you.
Now visualize this thing as a physical object that you are holding in your hands. It can be a stone, a ball, a bag, or anything else that represents what you want to release. And notice how it feels in your hands. Now say silently, I release this from my life. I release this from my life. I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. I release it with love. I am free. As you feel these words in your heart, throw the object into the waterfall. Watch as it disappears into the water. Feel the weight lifted off your hands and heart. Feel the relief and joy of letting go. Take a moment to appreciate the space that you have created in your life. This beautiful space is now open for new possibilities, opportunities and experiences that align with your true purpose and potential. Say silently, I am open and ready for the best that life has to offer. I am open and ready for the best that life has to offer. I am open and ready for my highest good. I am open and ready for my highest good. Take a few more deep breaths and smile. Smile. Put your shoulders back. Roll them back and smile. Slowly begin to come back to the room, opening your eyes and returning to the present moment as you allow yourself to feel the freedom of the power of release. Coming back and gently opening your eyes. <sighs> Welcome back. We wanted to stay there, didn't we? Because it felt so free and light. During that time, I almost said, and imagine you're running around like Megan with the zoomies. Because that's what it feels like when we let go of something. We feel lighter. It's like an instant shedding of that weight for us. Who's feeling a little better now? Who released something? I did. It was surprising what I released. I didn't have any idea what I was going to do, but it came very quickly. Oh, I can tell you it was low self-esteem that I sometimes have. So I just like threw it in the water. Don't need to carry on with that. All right, so let us say together, I am a beloved child of God, here to be an ambassador of good. Let's say it again. I am a beloved child of God, here to be an ambassador of good. So it is time for our financial blessings, and we're so grateful for those who... Uh, 
help to support Unity of Tempe. We wouldn't be here without your financial blessings. We have rent and we have things to, that we have to pay every month. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those. Let us take our blessing to our heart and we will say it just by... Uh, can we go to the next slide? I'm sorry, Ron. There we go. Uh, let's say together, I am a joyful sharer of my good. I remember that as I give, I receive and that God is my source. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you prefer to give online, Zell Unity of Tempe at Gmail, PayPal also. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for grabbing the prayer box. We do have a prayer box at the back if anyone ever wants to leave a prayer in the prayer box. We are so grateful for these blessings. We bless the giver and the receiver and the stewardship of their use. Thank you, God. We bless every prayer in the prayer box that has ever been or ever will be. And we bless those who give online as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Uh, Matthew's Bank Food Crossing, which we partner with. If you'd like to bring in items, these are the most needed items. If you're at the dollar store um, and you find something, you can bring these in. We partner, as I say, with Epiphany to support them. Yes, so you are so very loved. I want you to say that. I am so very loved. Say it again. I am so very loved. Now turn to someone and tell them that they're so very loved. Sandra, you are so very loved. You are so very loved. You are so very loved. We are so very loved. So I invite you to be with us next week for practical spiritual inspiration for creating a life you love. What will the message be? Spirit has yet to reveal it to me. That's a way of saying, I don't know. <laughs> but who will you invite? All right. And so Lighthouse, just continue to envision this entire beautiful sanctuary that we have here, our space filled to bringing that we go to two services. We would love, love, love that. So, and we each get to play a part in that by inviting someone to be here. Let us say together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, wherever we are, God is. All is well and we are grateful. So for those watching online, have a beautiful week and we hope to see you in person very, very soon.